First on Guam. KUAM News Headlines are presented by Calvo's Insurance, protecting Micronesia for 85 years. Matson and the Adahi Itano program. Apply at matson.com. Cars Plus, Guam's automotive leader in sustainability and electric vehicles. Learn more at carsplusguam.com. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on KUAM News Primetime, outgoing Chief Medical Examiner Dr. Jeffrey Nine speaks about his annual death report before senators. Concern brought up over how police interpreted some suspicious deaths. Plus, one week in trial, a police officer testifies in the trial against a doctor accused of allegations that he molested a patient. And more than half of the Guam Police Department's fleet out of commission, KUAM getting the numbers through a Freedom of Information Act request. Half a day and good evening. Welcome to KUAM News Primetime. I'm Nick Delgado. And I'm Destiny Cruz. Happy Fresco Friday. Thank you so much for ending your week here with us. Well, Dust, we lead off your broadcast with an incredible update to the search for a missing teenager. Guam police confirming at 2.30 this afternoon, G.J. Silum was found alive and well. He was spotted in the Matopping Beach area in Tumon. Authorities say the teen was missing for more than 48 hours. His family and Guam police asked the community for help after the 18-year-old never returned home from school midday Wednesday. Authorities say he was taken to the hospital for medical assessment. Were all recent suspicious deaths on Guam looked at by the chief medical examiner in a timely period? The question brought up during a discussion at the Guam Congress building today. The concern also raising questions on how police response impacted his autopsy findings. Senators taking a closer look at the issue. In the past year, seven homicides have been reported by Guam police. But could there be more? Right. Committee Chair and Public that's Safety that's Senator that's Chris Barnett that's that's horrified that's at the thought. I, mean, I, I shudder to think, and you know, uh, I'm hesitant to say this on the record, but you know, I worry that people in our community are getting away with murder. Outgoing Chief Guam Medical Guam Examiner Chief Dr. Jeffrey Nine Guam telling Guam lawmakers Guam. that without a medical examiner for three years, Guam police may have slipped into a pattern of not calling his office to the scene of certain deaths. Nine says it is currently up to law enforcement to notify his office. So typically what happens is a medical examiner's office has a 24-7 staff with a death investigator on call. Someone in the community, whether it's the police department, the paramedics, the emergency room, they know right away to pick up the phone and call the medical examiner. Hey, we have a dead body. Uh, we want to report it to you. Well, that doesn't happen on Guam. We don't have that process. He adds that the lack of a system in place paired with no cross-communication has resulted in a handful of disagreements between the medical examiner's office and police on the conclusion of cases. And I would say they also have kind of fallen into that category where someone wasn't either notified or I wasn't called out at a scene that happened on a certain day until like two or three days later. And so... That, that causes a problem with my findings, and then they couldn't go back and investigate it properly. KUAM reached out to the chief of police on the issue. Still, Dr. Nine says he doesn't entirely fault GPD, re-emphasizing the need to establish policies. He hopes to do so even after relocating. We can establish those policies to say, hey, when such and such deaths occur, when it's a firearm death, any firearm death, you have to call our death investigator. If it's a suicide that's suspicious. Meantime, the island's attorney general notes that the current law does not make it clear that GPD has a mandatory reporting duty to call the medical examiner. Still, senators argue the law should be updated. Now to the trial ongoing for a doctor accused of sexual misconduct. Today, the prosecution calling up a Guam police officer involved in the investigation. A separate witness also testified about the surveillance footage pulled from the day of the alleged incident. Julian Hernandez reports. 
Guam Police Officer Angel Santos takes the stand before Judge Alberto Tolentino in Superior Court today. He is testifying as a prosecution's witness in the misdemeanor trial against Dr. Ukuchu Okoma. Okoma stands accused of groping a woman, his patient, before molesting her in October 2021. Santos testifying how he processed the evidence. And do you remember what that evidence was? No, I never. <clears throat> I wasn't privileged to see it other than the packaging. But you would be, if you recall that case, do you recall what you were retrieving? Um, would you normally read the evidence sheet? Yes. What was the evidence you retrieved? Uh, a taped and sealed package that contained uh, universal serial bus. Island Cancer Center Administrator Colin O'Connell also testifying during trial. He says he gave 80 hours of surveillance video footage captured the day of the alleged incident to police as well as confirming the layout of the Guam Medical Plaza where Acoma's clinic is located. Were you responsible for any security? Uh, we subcontracted the security concerns to someone else, but yes, we were responsible for security in the building. I think there were 13 separate cameras. Okay. Uh, and do you know um, if they go into the defendant's clinic or not? No, they're all in common area. Acoma is facing two counts of fourth-degree criminal sexual conduct. He is still actively practicing medicine at his private clinic. Julian Hernandez, KUAM News. For a neighborhood and community, the presence of patrol vehicles not only makes people feel safe, but also serves as a deterrent for potential crimes. But numbers obtained by KUAM from the Guam Police Department show that over half of their fleet is out of commission. Jonah Gincharferis breaks down the numbers. I get a lot of concerns about police uh, visibility. So when I look at the numbers of vehicles that we have assigned out in the precincts, uh, it's concerning to me. You know, we've Senator got a, Chris Barnett, chair for the Committee on Public Safety, responding to recent numbers KUAM obtained through the Freedom of Information Act request from the Guam Police Department on their current fleet of vehicles. <laughs> Among the four precincts in Sinahanya, or Central, Hoggett, Tumon, and Dededo, there is supposed to be a total of 60 vehicles, 13 at Sinahanya, 15 in Hoggett, 15 in Tumon, and 17 at Dededo. However, there are only 20 operable vehicles among the four precincts. 40 are currently down. That's an average of one vehicle per village, which is concerning. You take a village like Dededo, we need a lot more than uh, one patrol car uh, roaming around. So. You know, I think that uh, we've got to level up and we definitely uh, to have, have to get more police presence uh, out there um, in, the, in the villages, right? Uh, this is where, you know, people are uh, being victimized uh, by the crime. Breaking down the numbers, GPD has a total of 235 vehicles. Of that, 111 are operable and 124 are down. Of that number, 50 are slated to be surveyed and 74 are awaiting repairs. KUAM also asked... Of the 74 vehicles awaiting repairs, how many were involved in an accident? The response was 21. When we further inquired of that number, how many were officers in violation, GPD refused to provide that information. It's a no-brainer. The more police presence out there, the more it sends a message to the bad guys that they will be caught. According to Barnett, who raised concerns to GPD Chief Stephen Ignacio, the agency received $2.4 million for new vehicles. I think it's really about uh, equipping the officers with the tools that they need to do the job. And when we have a well-equipped uh, police force, uh, we're better able to protect the public from uh, the rampant crime that's out here in our villages. Jonagan Charfis, KM News. Guam Power Authority's GIGO combustion turbine that was damaged after Typhoon Mauer is finally being replaced. GPA says this crucial component's delivery, delivery accelerates the ongoing initiatives to bolster power generation capacity to meet Guam's increasing power demands in the coming months. Officials say the damage severely impacted critical power infrastructure and energy reserves. Power crews will undertake the final phase of installing and testing the generator rotor will that will add 20 megawatts to the island-wide power system. The completion of the final phase expected around the end of this month. The restoration of the GIGO CT is just one aspect, GPA says, of its multi-pronged approach to address the island's capacity shortfall, bridging the gap until the opening of the Ukudu power plant, which is slated for September 15th of next year. Now to an important reminder. 
If you haven't filed your taxes yet, the deadline for individual returns and extensions is on Monday, April 15th. We catch up with last minute tax filer Haldiza Mapness, who has a message for the community. I've been so busy. A lot of things is happening for the past days that you know we've been through, uh, what we've been through, all the Mawar and all that, the COVID and everything. And finally, I told my husband, let's go do it because you know, if we're late, we're going to be charged. If you were not able to do it, do an extension. You know, with um, they do accept extension. If you go get a form, fill it up, and turn it in. That's the only way you can help you out. But uh, they give you some certain months to file it. Late filers, late filers like Mapness can request an automatic six-month extension with Form 4868, which must still be filed by the original date of April 15th but you must still pay any old taxes by Monday to avoid possible penalties. To beat the lines, it's encouraged to e-file certain forms online. You can do that at guamtax.com. Time for a quick break to keep it here. You're watching KUAM, your leader in local news. Fridays on KOAM News, presented by Fresco Clothing, original custom design apparel of Guam and the Marianas, located in Hagatnya, just across from the Gaddish Shopping Center. Rooted in the community since 1995, Kmart is here to serve you 24 hours a day. From essentials to fill your pantry to delightful treats, our selection of groceries have everything you need to stock your kitchen with love. Step directly into style with the latest fashion finds in shoes and clothing for the family at unbeatable prices. Turn your living space into a dream home with our unparalleled selection of home goods. Illuminate your shopping experience and brighten your budget every week with our blue light specials. These specials are a testament to our commitment to offering the biggest variety for the best value. Discover a world where quality and savings meets convenience. Kmart is your one-stop shop where every visit is an adventure. Shop smart and save big at Kmart, your Guam shopping destination. Find a plan that goes with your flow. Get unlimited local talk, text, and data at the most affordable rate with unlimited flow postpaid. Welcome back to Primetime. The U.S. military preparing for another major mission in the Northern Marianas called Operation Wellness. They're back for a third year to provide health care services at no cost to the community. Regional correspondent Tomas Benguanya has the details. Operation Wellness will bring 150 service members to Rhoda, Tinian, and Saipan under the Innovative Readiness Training. I'm excited to be able to bring these services to the community at no cost. And I spoke about services. We're providing five areas of care to the community, starting specifically with medical care, uh, doing youth uh, physicals and screens. We'll be providing uh, dental care. We'll also be providing uh, veterinary care behavioral health with counseling and also uh, screenings. And then the last would be optometry, so with eyeglass fabrications. They've expanded their time on island to a month. This year's mission will run from June 8 to 18 and June 20 to June 28. The Army Reserve, Air National Guard, Air Force, and Navy are involved. And if, uh, if the numbers are anything like last year, Last year we provided uh, services uh, to over 3,000 patients for a grand total of approximately 24,000 procedures. So we're hoping to come back uh, so and, uh, and do much the same. The mission comes at a critical time. 
This is a great opportunity for the people of the CNMI. As you know, we're experiencing an economic decline. And what this does is that it makes sure, it ensures that our community is always like uh, healthy. Um, a healthy community will build a healthy economic uh, prosperity. Tomas Manglonia, KUAM News, Saipan. The question of whether she is eligible to run for Zonia mayor has been answered. Mayoral, mayoral excuse me, candidate Debbie Lujan will be on the ballot in the primary. Her eligibility was questioned after she, after she filed her court and police clearance that noted her 1992 assault conviction. Guam law prohibits candidates from running for public office if they were convicted of a felony, a mes misdemeanor involving criminal sexual conduct, or crime or of moral turpitude. The Guam Election Commission got a legal opinion ruling that Lujan was ineligible. Lujan speaking before the Guam Election Commission Thursday, arguing she was only convicted of a petty misdemeanor 31 years ago. It was just a mutual combat that we had with another person and we agreed to disagree and we got it down in the court, settled it down and it became a petty misdemeanor. So I don't know where, according to my attorney, where in their books is it moral turpitude. Somebody just kind of brought that to make that, I don't know, make it more worse than it really, really is. I'm all out there in the village. My billboards are up, I've done all my, used all my money, you know, trying to get to my village. Lujan asked the commission to reconsider its decision, and they did. The GEC unanimously agreeing the petty misdemeanor does not prevent her from running. Lujan's running as a Republican against candidate Franklin Hilton on the Democratic ticket for the Jotnya mayoral versus incumbent Bill Kina and Brian B.J. Turlahi. The Guam Election Commission isn't having much luck finding a place to host its early voting center. The GEC is looking for a spot to allow people to exercise their right ahead of the August 3rd primary. The initial invitation for bid that would have reserved a location for six months to host the primary and general elections went unanswered. It was said during the GEC meeting they may change the time frame, only needing the early voting site in July and in October. Counting the votes could be much quicker this year if the Guam Election Commission secures two new tabulation machines. It's all an effort to modernize the election technology. The new tabulators are said to count 300 ballots per minute. The existing tabulators count 90 ballots per minute. The GEC is using federal grant money from an election security grant to make the purchase. An invitation for bid will be issued for the machines. That's great for the candidates wanting to hear the results faster, including the <laughs> voters plus for us as well. I know, good to hear. Well, the president of Palau is making his way to Guam recently to take part in the University of Guam's 15th conference on island sustainability. Ali, the six-day conference bringing together local and regional leaders throughout this week to dive into critical topics like climate change and renewable energy, all for a more resilient future. Natsuki Hirayama has the story. The University of Guam proudly presents the 15th Annual Conference on Island Sustainability. Sustainability is in our DNA and, and uh, we have to do our part. That's President of Palau, Sarango Woods Jr. speaking with KUAM after his keynote speech at the University of Guam's 15th Conference on Island Sustainability. Just coming and listening to uh, all the efforts that, that Guam is, is taking in every space. Because sustainability is not just environment, it's uh, about health and education and, 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 and building uh, uh, econo an economy that's thriving, but uh, of course it, it, it is impactful and, and doesn't destroy your environment. All week long, the conference bringing together local and regional leaders to dive into critical issues and solutions like climate change and renewable energy. One of the initiatives that, that Guam is taking is the Guam Green Growth. Uh, and uh, we really appreciate what Guam has done to help us uh, create the Palau dashboard. Whip says working hand in hand with Guam has allowed Palau to launch their own green growth initiative earlier this year. That initiative is so important because it's about uh, holding leadership accountable, but also helping the public understand their role. How uh, when you have that dashboard, you can see your progress or your regression. 
He also shares how sustainability is woven into their very fabric of being. One of the things we always talk about in Palau is our practice of the bull. Uh, and the bull is really a management practice that uh, the chiefs in Palau uh, would uh, get together and they say, well, we need to stop the harvesting of, of this type of fish or we need to uh, close off this area of the reef because it's been overfished or over abused because uh, we need it to allow it to rejuvenate, to, to get healthy so that we can continue to use it. He adds it's maintaining traditions like bull that have allowed Palau to thrive and flourish for sustainably so that we can ensure that, uh, that what we've inherited is passed on to our children better than we received it. Mitsuki Hirayama, KUAM News. The Ukudu High School community celebrating the best it has to offer this Saturday with its 16th annual Bulldog Day. It's a tradition that showcases the school's spirit and accomplishments in addition to its over 40 school clubs. The free event will include a carnival on the school grounds with a variety of booths and games, an indoor bazaar and food trucks. It will also serve as a pathway for students to learn more about how to get involved in school activities and academics. Chloe Mangano, Okadu student body president on the pride he has for a school. There are people in this world that will help you be better. And like our educators, our staff, my, our, my fellow peers, they've helped me become the better version of myself. And that's the meaning of, of being a Bulldog. Ukudu High School is the place to be tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Now for your world at home. Here's a view captured from the beach in Hagen. Troy Palamalu Safety, AKA The Quiet Storm. Troy's seen more out of the corners of his cold steel eyes than most mortal men have seen straight on. The last thing an offense would witness? A fury of flowing mane incoming at high speed. Hey! Cat-like quickness and supernatural instincts like Troy's only come once in a lifetime. And oh, how grateful we are that they came in ours. No one made the beloved burg of Pittsburgh feel quite as safe as this safety. The Hyundai Tucson with advanced safety and tech because even safeties could use a little more safety themselves.
that not how he says Taco Bell only really hits after midnight? Which is why I'm gonna use the Cantina chicken menu to help him see the Taco Bell light. It hits. Hi. <laughs> Are you at not Howie? The yeah, food hits, right? The Cantina chicken crispy taco isn't just for late night. The Cantina chicken quesadilla isn't just for late night because it has a perfect slow roasted chicken to melted cheese ratio. That's chicken on the inside, cheese everywhere else. Introducing the new Cantina chicken quesadilla only at Taco Bell. Don't need to work, babe. Keep the smile on your face. The moments you can't replace. And I'll be around. Oh, oh, oh. You can count on me. You can count on me for life. Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. Foodie Call is presented by Devondale, real milk from free grazing cows. Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Foodie Call. And today we're back here at Slingstone and we're gonna go check out our friends and see what they got for us today. Come follow me. Hi. <laughs> Slingstone, what can I get for you? Can I actually go ahead and try one of your sling s'mores today? That looks really good. It is really good. Okay, Thank perfect. You. Thank you so much. You made a good <laughs> Anything else? I think that should be it for today. I'll be right back. Okay, thank you. Hop day, guys. Welcome to Sling Store. My name is Kayla Maspit, and today we're going to be making our Sling S'mores wrap. So you're going to come over here. We're going to get our blender. Then we're going to put in our Devondale full cream. We're going to do our coffee base, our cream base, chocolate sauce, vanilla syrup. We're going to put it back on the blender. Then we're going to get our graham crackers. We're going to add one is okay. Then we're going to get our 16 ounce ice cup. Add it in your blender. Then you're going to blend it up. And then we're going to drizzle some chocolate sauce around the cup. Pour it in your cup. Then we're going to add our whipped cream. Then we're going to add some graham crackers. Then we're going to top it off with our marshmallow. And there you have it. Your sling s'mores wrap. Thank you. Thank you. My marshmallow on top. <laughs> Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Go ahead and give it a try. I've never tried eating a s'more while drinking coffee, and this is definitely how it tastes like. These are the graham crackers, the chocolate. So good, and the Devon Dill makes it so, so, so creamy. For you s'mores lovers, this is your journey. All right, guys, and that's it for today's edition of Foodie Calls. Thank you to our homies at Sinkstone for always making the yummiest drinks for us. And, of course, to Pepsi and Devondale for bringing you this segment. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Foodie Call is presented by Devondale, real milk from free grazing cows. Make plans to go down to beautiful Talafofo on the 26th because that is when the Banana Festival kicks off 15th time. The wonderful people of the Southern Village are holding this. We celebrate everything about the banana. We're all about potassium here. So thank you so much. Make sure to check it out Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's happening. Drown Free Guahan Initiative is holding their very, very important classes on how you can be water safe. Basic 30-minute training sessions, April 14th, starting at 8.30 in the morning. You have to register, so go to amphibiousguam.com and find out these life-saving skills. And a native tree planting event is happening up in the CNMI, so make sure to participate in that if you live up there. It's on the 14th, starting at 2 p.m. Tools, trees, and refreshments are provided. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. That was News Bites, past tense. How do you Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club shout out submitted on KUAM.com? And the winner of a yummy ice cream cake. Everybody, when you got a member of the family who's celebrating their birthday, it's an extra, extra, extra special day. And one of our own, the very wonderful Reese Menu celebrates a birthday on this Friday. Reese, happy birthday to you from all of us here at KUAM. Your brothers, your sisters, the people that share laughs with you, we're really, really happy 
and privileged to have you as a member of our team and most especially a member of our family. And we wish you the best birthday ever. Also celebrating birthday number 20 is Matthew Daniel Cabrera Chargloff and Matthew celebrates birthday number 20. Congratulations and happy birthday, Matt. And to our son, we thank God for you and the man of God that you have become. Amen to that, brother. May God continue to bless you with many more to come. Congratulations to you, Matthew and Reese on your Friday birthday. And congratulations to Joseph Ramos because Joseph and his family are the owners of a new Cold Stone Creamery ice cream cake, which is going to taste delicious this weekend. So we will be in touch with you, Joseph, to let you know when you can swing by Cold Stone Creamery and pick up your delicious prize. Happy birthday to all of you celebrating out there today. Happy birthday, Reese. Happy birthday. A lot of April babies, huh? Yep. We got Jules' birthday coming up this weekend. Mm -hmm. Happy early birthday, Happy Jules. Happy birthday. Happy early birthday, Suki. Yep. Is it Curtis? So, I think we're just yeah, going to have so a month, many. party long month, right? Yeah. Happy April. Happy April, mm -hmm. baby birthdays. That's your primetime show. Thanks for watching. I'm Nick Delgado. And I'm Destiny Cruz. Have a safe weekend and stay beautiful. Today and welcome to another episode of Cinema Weekly. I'm your host, Tomas Manglonia on Saipan, where we recap the headlines from the past week and share what you need to know heading into the weekend. In our first story, the Commonwealth Casino Commission grants an extension for settlement negotiations between Imperial Pacific International and the CCC Executive Director, Andrew Yum. Commonwealth Casino Commission Executive Director Andrew Yum rushed into the special meeting minutes after it started, asking for a two-hour delay as settlement negotiations continue with Imperial Pacific International. The CCC is expected to decide the fate of IPI's casino license. When they returned in the afternoon after another two-hour delay, Yom said they've exhausted all options. For all intents and purposes, I just don't think that uh, this settlement can go through. So I therefore, I, I, so I'm here to to let you know that uh, we don't have a deal, no settlement uh, is to take place. So you do what you're gonna do to, in terms of uh, your um, decision. KUAM learned that the negotiations started three days ago. If the revocation vote were to happen, it would be based on two out of five enforcement actions. The first is to maintain minimum payroll services, and the other is for non-payment of 2020 regulatory fees. Residents voiced support and opposition during public comments. Their time here should be over. They should leave this island. They don't need to rebrand. They don't need to buy another frozen food company. They don't need to come back with another tactic. The eyes are on this place now. You should not just throw this project away because something wrong has happened. All the wrongs that has happened, the CNMI allowed it to happen. CNMI is at fault for this failure. CNMI can correct it. What message are we sending to the world? We have an investor who wants to invest in our CNMI such as IPI. Unfortunately, some house leaders will do whatever necessary to ensure that the investor's IPI fails. I recommend that the governor take action and remove this commission should you members fail once again to act in your fiduciary responsibility to uphold the Constitution of the Commonwealth and revoke IPI's license today. As of press time, the CCC did not take any official action. And our next story, there was a major shakeup before the primary that was supposed to happen on Saturday. The CNMI Republican Party has officially endorsed Kimberlyn King Hines for NMI delegate as John Gonzalez withdrew his participation in the primary to run as an independent. Here's more. The NMI Republican Party officially endorsed Kimberlyn King Hines for U.S. delegate and canceled the primary that was set for Saturday. It comes after a major shakeup as candidate John Gonzalez withdrew his letter of intent seeking the party's endorsement after taking issue with the primary allowing only party members to vote. NMI Republican Party President Diego Benaventi said their leadership met Thursday morning. Although it's it's it's. It's, it's a close Republican membership uh, primary, as, as is with many other jurisdictions, including, including Guam, really. And, um, and that, that 
you know, that's the format that we're going to follow. And it, it, we really opened it to the point where anyone, uh, based on the format that we approved, anyone who is willing to come and sign in as a member of the Sinai Republican Party can vote on that day. But um, I understand they're, they're still not satisfied with that. And so, you know, it's time to move on. Gonzalez was not available for an in-person interview and directed KUAM to his campaign committee's letter. They write that the power and right for an individual to vote for their candidate should undeniably be allowed without any restriction. The letter also states that they have indisputable evidence calling into question the neutrality of party officials. Gonzalez confirmed he'll be running as an independent. In March, he told KUAM he'd support the GOP candidate if he lost the primary. The opportunity to run for independent, I think, would be, for me, uh, disingenuous uh, when I've already offered that uh, on uh, uh, diplomatic uh, terms. Um, our people deserve better. But with a major dispute, Gonzalez has now broken away to pursue the seat on his own. Meanwhile, KUAM spoke with the now official Republican delegate candidate, Kimberlyn King Hines, Thursday afternoon. She said she welcomed a primary battle and knew the rules that were in place for years. It's an honor to run, um, to be able to be in a situation to present my ideas to the community, um, to ask for their support, um, and to share, you know, just my vision um, of moving the Commonwealth forward. And that vision basically is just focused on, on the economy. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll have more right after this. Honey, do you want some milk? Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment, and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. Only Pizza Hut lets you surround your favorite pizza with greatness. The one and only stuffed crust pizza tempts your taste buds with melted cheese stuffed inside that amazing crust. And at just $18.99 with one topping, the stuffed crust pizza is truly irresistible. So grab your slice of pizza perfection with cheesy goodness baked right into the crust. The stuffed crust pizza, just $18.99 with one topping. Only at Pizza Hut, the island's best. Half a day, welcome back to CNMI Weekly. In our next story, regional leaders and residents are calling on United Airlines to create a more fair price for the round-trip ticket between Guam and Saipan. A United call for fair pricing from United Airlines. An online petition calling for fair pricing for the $580 round-trip ticket between Saipan and Guam garnered over 2,000 signatures over the weekend, community frustration boiling over the sky-high prices in the friendly skies. And my Governor Arno Palacios weighed in on the issue at Monday morning's press conference. And I'm hoping that, that with, the, with the, the new uh, awareness or... or of, of our people now, you know, pushing back and or uh, requesting United to lower its price. I, I hope that uh, <clears throat> United would give that consideration. You're absolutely right. We we were subsidizing uh, United uh, during the pandemic, but you know the pandemic's not here. The the, the prices never went back down. The cost not only impacting Guam and NMI residents, but also the already struggling tourism industry. 
we are concerned about the cost of travel, of course. It, it limits um, the options for us to be able to market to the military traffic in Guam. Um, at a $580 fare for a 20 minute flight when you can get you know, $300 round trips to Manila or you know, $200 round trips to Seoul. So, you know, those factors, of course, weigh in on our on, um, on everything, our decision-making processes here in the CMI. The governor said it's an issue likely to be discussed at an upcoming meeting of Micronesian leaders this summer. Guam and NMI leaders have discussed pushing for the U.S. Congress to exempt the Marianas from federal cabotage laws, allowing foreign airlines to provide low-cost travel in the Marianas. It's also a problem throughout Micronesia from Guam. You know, can you imagine how much it costs to fly from Guam to Palau, Chu, uh, and Pompeii? Uh, so this is a regional issue. And for our next story, we check in with the mayor of the Northern Islands about the progress being made to connect the Northern Islands to the Internet. Imagine telehealth, attending school on Zoom, and FaceTiming your friends and family from Pagan. I think to fast track because it's a low hanging fruit. I know that uh, we could uh, get uh, funding through OIA department or Department of Education top grant. Apply uh, for that, uh, hoping we can get approval this year so that within the next year we'll have internet up north. Bridging that digital divide is more of a reality for the Northern Islands as its mayor, Valentino Tysakin, works to bring connectivity to the north. We're going to look into a lower, lower forbid, yeah, something like Starlink, yeah. To, uh, get quotations from Starlink, uh, Pacific International, uh, uh, internet uh, providers for satellite. The mayor hopes it paves the way for Northern Ireland's residents, about 400 of them who mostly live on Saipan, to return to the islands. It's been a year since we've had a permanent resettlement on those islands and, you know, I'm thinking to uh, restart again and, uh, you know, the people, the residents out there, because right now it's on the public land. So I've been having a conversation with uh, public lands also regarding the Homestead Waiver Act. So what, what that is, is, uh, you know, for those that have previous claims, uh, you know, prior to 2006, uh, we will be issuing out uh, soon, right? So right now I, I know I have about 18 claims under uh, public land. Mayor said they want to build a long-term sustainable future for residents who call the Northern Islands home. And lastly, April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. We check in with the Northern Marianas Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence as they proclaim this month for the cause. It is a privilege and an honor to have you join us for the 2024 Sexual Assault Awareness Month Proclamation Signing Ceremony. Welcome to the movement. The Northern Marianas Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence held a proclamation signing ceremony where Governor Palacios and Lieutenant Governor Apatang declared this month for the cause. During his inspirational address, Office of the Attorney General Chief Prosecutor Chester Hines said they stand with survivors. Statistics show that less than 5% of sexual assault allegations are made up. And for cases involving children, it's even less. I guess I'm biased, but let me ask, how do we not believe a parent or a teacher or a counselor and then tells their story to the police and then tells their story to DYS and then tells their story to the prosecutor multiple times to get ready for trial and then goes into court and not only sees the jury, all the people in the gallery, but sees the perpetrator looking right at him. And then they tell their story again. And people still don't believe. This has to change. I am hopeful it will. The coalition will host various events through April to raise awareness about the issue and build community. Let's work together to seek justice, find closure, and most importantly, find peace in life.
Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Cinemai Weekly. We'll see you right here, same place, same time next week. At Not Howie says Taco Bell only really hits after midnight, which is why I'm going to use the Cantina chicken menu to help him see the Taco Bell light. Mm, very juicy. <laughs> Hi. The uh, food hits, right? Are you at Not Howie? Does it hit or does it not hit? I'd say it hits. Yeah, it does hit. I can't lie. OK, but you did, maybe. The Cantina chicken crispy taco isn't just for late night. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Hafiday and welcome to another episode of Cinemai Weekly. I'm your host, Tomas Manglonia on Saipan, where we recap the headlines from the past week and share what you need to know heading into the weekend. In our first story, the Commonwealth Casino Commission grants an extension for settlement negotiations between Imperial Pacific International and the CCC Executive Director, Andrew Yum. Commonwealth Casino Commission Executive Director Andrew Yum rushed into the special meeting minutes after it started, asking for a two-hour delay as settlement negotiations continue with Imperial Pacific International. The CCC is expected to decide the fate of IPI's casino license. When they returned in the afternoon after another two-hour delay, Yom said they've exhausted all options. For all intents and purposes, I just don't think that uh, this settlement can go through. So I therefore, I, I, so I'm here to to let you know that uh, we don't have a deal. No settlement uh, is to take place. So you do what you got to do in terms of uh, your um, decision. KUAM learned that the negotiation started three days ago. If the revocation vote were to happen, it would be based on two out of five enforcement actions. The first is to maintain minimum payroll services, and the other is for non-payment of 2020 regulatory fees. Residents voiced support and opposition during public comments. Their time here should be over. They should leave this island. They don't need to rebrand. They don't need to buy another frozen food company. They don't need to come back with another tactic. The eyes are on this place now. You should not just throw this project away because something wrong has happened. All the wrongs that has happened, the CNMI allowed it to happen. CNMI is at fault for this failure. CNMI can correct it. What message are we sending to the world? We have an investor who wants to invest in our CNMI such as IPI. Unfortunately, some house leaders will do whatever necessary to ensure that the investor's IPI fails. I recommend that the governor take action and remove this commission should you members fail once again to act in your fiduciary responsibility to uphold the Constitution of the Commonwealth and revoke IPI's license today. As of press time, the CCC did not take any official action. And our next story, there was a major shakeup before the primary that was supposed to happen on Saturday. The CNMI Republican Party has officially endorsed Kimberlyn King Hines for NMI delegate as John Gonzalez withdrew his participation in the primary to run as an independent. Here's more. The NMI Republican Party officially endorsed Kimberlyn King Hines for U.S. delegate and canceled the primary that was set for Saturday. It comes after a major shakeup as candidate John Gonzalez withdrew his letter of intent seeking the party's endorsement after taking issue with the primary allowing only party members to vote. NMI Republican Party President Diego Benaventi said their leadership met Thursday morning. Although it's it's it's. It's, it's a close Republican membership uh, primary, as, as is with many other jurisdictions, including, including Guam, really. And, um, and that, that, you know, that's the format that we're going to follow. And it, it, we really open it to the point where anyone, uh, 
based on the format that we approved, anyone who is willing to come and sign in as a member of the Sinai Republican Party can vote on that day. But um, I understand they're, they're still not satisfied with that, and so, you know, it's time to move on. Gonzalez was not available for an in-person interview and directed KUAM to his campaign committee's letter. They write that the power and right for an individual to vote for their candidate should undeniably be allowed without any restriction. The letter also states that they have indisputable evidence calling into question the neutrality of party officials. Gonzalez confirmed he'll be running as an independent. In March, he told KUAM he'd support the GOP candidate if he lost the primary. The opportunity to run for independent, I think, would be, for me, uh, disingenuous uh, when I've already offered that uh, on uh, uh, diplomatic uh, terms. Um, our people deserve better. But with a major dispute, Gonzalez has now broken away to pursue the seat on his own. Meanwhile, KUAM spoke with the now official Republican delegate candidate, Kimberlyn King Hines, Thursday afternoon. She said she welcomed a primary battle and knew the rules that were in place for years. It's an honor to run, um, to be able to be in a situation to present my ideas to the community, um, to ask for their support, um, and to share, you know, just my vision um, of moving the Commonwealth forward. And that vision basically is just focused on, on the economy. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll have more right after this. Brian Dawkins, safety, a.k.a. Weapon X. Brian laughs at audibles, laughs. For there is nothing he does not anticipate. He is never caught off guard because his guard is always up. His skills of perception are honed like talons. Brian sees all. He knows all. Dominates all. His defensive prowess is feared the world over. The all-electric Hyundai Ionic 5 with advanced safety and tech. Because even safeties could use a little more safety themselves. Search for your Hyundai Ionic 5 today. Hafiday, welcome back to CNMI Weekly. In our next story, regional leaders and residents are calling on United Airlines to create a more fair price for the round-trip ticket between Guam and Saipan. A United call for fair pricing from United Airlines. An online petition calling for fair pricing for the $580 round-trip ticket between Saipan and Guam garnered over 2,000 signatures over the weekend, community frustration boiling over the sky-high prices in the friendly skies. And my Governor Arno Palacios weighed in on the issue at Monday morning's press conference. And I'm hoping that, that with, the, with the, the, the new... Uh, awareness or, or of, of our people now, you know, pushing back and or uh, requesting United to lower its price. I, I hope that uh, <clears throat> United would give that consideration. You're absolutely right. We, we were subsidizing uh, United uh, during the pandemic, but, you know, the pandemic's not here. The, the, the prices never went back down. The cost not only impacting Guam and NMI residents, but also the already struggling tourism industry. We are concerned about the cost of travel, of course. It, it limits um, the options for us to be able to market to the military traffic in Guam. Um, at a $580 fare for a 20-minute flight when you can get you know, $300 round trips to Manila or you know, $200 round trips to Seoul. So you know, those factors, of course, weigh in on our... On, um, on everything, our decision-making processes here in the CMI. The governor said it's an issue likely to be discussed at an upcoming meeting of Micronesian leaders this summer. 
Guam and NMI leaders have discussed pushing for the U.S. Congress to exempt the Marianas from federal cabotage laws, allowing foreign airlines to provide low-cost travel in the Marianas. It's also a problem throughout Micronesia from Guam. You know, can you imagine how much it costs to fly from Guam to Palau, Chu, uh, and Pompeii? This is a regional issue. And for our next story, we check in with the mayor of the Northern Islands about the progress being made to connect the Northern Islands to the Internet. Imagine telehealth, attending school on Zoom, and FaceTiming your friends and family from Pagan. I think to fast track, because it's a low-hanging fruit, I know that uh, we could uh, get uh, funding through OIA, Department of, uh, Department of Interior, the uh, top grant, so we are applied and get approval this year. Within the next year, we'll have internet up north. Bridging that digital divide is more of a reality for the Northern Islands as its mayor, Valentino North. We're going to look into a lower, lower four bit, yeah, something like starting, yeah. We'll, uh, Quotations from Starlink, uh, Pacific International. I know there's two uh, uh, internet uh, providers for satellite. The mayor hopes it paves the way for Northern Ireland's residents, about 400 of them who mostly live on Saipan, to return to the islands. It's been a uh, year since we've had a permanent resettlement on those islands, and you know I'm thinking to uh, restart that again and. Uh, give the title back to, uh, you know, the people, the residents out there, because right now it's on the public land. So I've been having a conversation with uh, public lands also regarding the Homestead Waiver Act. So what, what that is, is, uh, you know, for those that have previous claims, uh, you know, prior to 2006, uh, we'll be issuing out uh, soon, right? So right now I, I know I have about... 18 claims under uh, public land. The mayor said they want to build a long-term sustainable future for residents who call the Northern Islands home. And lastly, April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. We check in with the Northern Marianas Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence as they proclaim this month for the cause. It is a privilege and an honor to have you join us for the 2024 Sexual Assault Awareness Month Proclamation Signing Ceremony. Welcome to the movement. The Northern Marianas Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence held a proclamation signing ceremony where Governor Palacios and Lieutenant Governor Apatang declared this month for the cause. During his inspirational address, Office of the Attorney General Chief Prosecutor Chester Hines said they stand with survivors. Statistics show that less than 5% of sexual assault allegations are made up. And for cases involving children, it's even less. I guess I'm biased. But let me ask, how do we not believe a child who tells a parent or a teacher or a counselor and then tells their story to DYS and then tells their story to the prosecutor multiple times to get ready for trial? and then goes into court and not only sees the jury, all the people in the gallery, but sees the perpetrator looking right at them. And then they tell their story again. And people still don't believe. This has to change. I am hopeful it will. The coalition will host various events through April to raise awareness about the issue and build community. Let's work together to seek justice, find closure, and most importantly, find peace in life. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of CNMI Weekly. We'll see you right here, same place, same time next week.